Hello folks, my name is Rajon and welcome to Rajon Reviews. I got some fascinating feedback from my last review and I've incorporated a lot of that in this review. Let's see if you can spot any difference. Rajon Reviews is a new channel and I hope that each movie review can have exciting but productive banter. I would love to hear your perspectives on my take, so comment, subscribe and let's get this going. Let's talk about today's movie, Sputnik. A little context about why I chose this. After a discussion with one of my friends, he suggested I give this movie a look. And after checking out the trailer, I was sold. You probably should go into the movie cold, as the trailer could be misleading with respect to the mood and the tone of the film. Sputnik was released on August 14, 2020, an unfortunate year, and is now available to stream on Hulu. This is the first movie by Igor Abramenko. It stars Oksana Akinshina, who you may recognize from that small movie, The Bond Supremacy. She also features in many Russian films and TV shows, including Sisters from 2001, To Each His Own, and the upcoming movie Chernobyl Abyss. If you were unfortunate enough to watch the trailer before watching the movie like I was, you would notice a lot of similarities to the Alien movie, and you wouldn't be off base. In an IndieWire article written by Ryan Latanzio on August 17, 2020, the director stated, I saw Alien when I was a kid. I saw just parts of it. Obviously, I was a kid, but sometimes it was on TV and I just saw snippets that terrified me. I thought, someday, I want to do something like that. I fell in love with this space, sci-fi, horror genre. Another exciting goal he wanted to achieve with this movie was making a Russian sci-fi film, which is surprisingly uncommon. He continues, We wanted to combine a very common setting for the Russian audiences, which is the USSR, and the 70s and the 80s, and the Soviet program. We wanted to bring these elements from outer space there. Sci-fi is a rare genre for the Russian film industry. Did he achieve the goals he stated? Hmm, let's find out. So, the story begins in the year 1983. Two Russian astronauts sit in their spacecraft orbiting the planet reminiscing about what they would do after returning home. There's a disturbance. While we are not initially privy to what happened, they are abruptly sent crashing into the Earth. Afterwards, we are introduced to an unorthodox psychiatrist, Dr. Tatiana Kilimova, who is under investigation for drowning a patient to save him. A military officer offers her an opportunity. He knows of her methods and would be willing to dismiss the case if she can separate the alien from the astronaut host. I want to avoid spoilers in my review so you can enjoy the movie, but I do want to spend some time talking about the themes and the characters. I really liked the movie. I don't think it's perfect, but there are lots of strengths. The characters, for example, are fully realized. Let me give you an example. Tatiana, the psychiatrist, who is the main character, starts off as an unsympathetic character, forceful, defensive, and very calculating. But by the end of the movie, she shows a lot of emotional growth, and you follow her arc quite convincingly. On the opposite spectrum, Colonel Semiradov starts off warm and convincing. But by the end of the movie, he's cold, calculating with his intentions. You learn from his actions that he shares a kinship with the psychiatrist in that they use unorthodox means to achieve their goals. In listening to a review by Impression Blend, I learned that it's actually pronounced Sputnik and it translates to companion. I think the film is aptly named because we see many characters who have inner demons, which when let out pales in comparison to what the alien itself could do. I should take a few moments to talk about the alien. 
I think the design of the alien is fascinating and actually quite unique. The first time it was introduced, I was squirming in my seat, not because it was scary, but it was very disconcerting to watch. In the same interview, the director states that they had been experimenting with a lot of different animals and combining their different elements and parts and trying to come up with something original that would amaze the audience and that would serve the story needs. Did he achieve his goal? I would say so. The mood of the film is cold and the environment seems to be in decay. Perhaps to signify the situation of the Soviet Union at that time. There are visible surfaces of concrete and metal and the movie has a hue of blue in moments where everyone has their guards up. In moments where the characters are introspective, there's an orange hue and a feeling of warmth. Perhaps to emphasize the duopoly or passenger in the characters. The movie loses me sometimes. I couldn't quite understand the unorthodox method the doctor was employing. And on many occasions in the film, I was exasperated by her choices. I concede that this is in line with her character, but those moments took me out of the movie. At one point, Colonel Semiradov remarked that she was professional, and I winced. Perhaps, given that he sees himself in her, it could be a means to cover for himself. The negatives don't outweigh the good in this movie. While there are other things to nitpick, like the trailer, which made the film seem like a situational horror, when it was actually more of a psychological horror. I think the movie did an excellent job of highlighting the passenger in the characters and how they could be both extraordinarily innovative and destructive. I would recommend this movie. So give it a watch. It's on Hulu. It's available to stream. Have a good day. Rajan.